ideas. We're all propagating ideas. When we get together in events like this, we cross-pollinate like never before. When we hold our big think conference at DFJ, we're cross-pollinating like never before. At universities, in cities, people are more inventive per capita when they live in a city than when they don't, because you can cross-pollinate ideas. So if every idea is a combination of prior ideas, you can consider progress as the combinatorial explosion that occurs as that set grows. You know, Tesla doesn't need crash test dummies, right? They don't need to actually crash the car or run the wind tunnel experiment to know that their coefficient of drag will be X, Y, or Z, right? Computational fluid dynamics simulation has gotten good enough that we don't even think to do those physical experiments anymore. The moment an industry makes that shift, the pace of progress accelerates dramatically. Which, by the way, is a caveat. I believe all meaningful change, all change for which a history book might one day be written about, comes from new entrants. It never comes from an existing company in their existing business. People sometimes mention Hewlett Packard or Apple, but in those cases, their innovation was when they went outside their core business. Right? Apple has not innovated in desktop or laptop computing for a decade. HP got into printers, they haven't done a thing since. Google will never reinvent search in a meaningful way, in a disruptive way. They'll do autonomous cars, reinvent the data center cooling systems, things that aren't their core business. They'll pivot into adjacent businesses, and if they're smart, do it in a way that's synergistic. But even big companies, if they're going to innovate, they do so outside the core. And when I say innovate, I mean meaningful innovation. Innovation we care about, innovation people will remember 20 years from now.